Hello everyone, once again welcome in my channel Grammar Guru. In the series of lectures that we are learning, in this video we are going to learn about the most important grammar topic for school, college and competitive examinations and that is add a question tag. Well, many of you must have learnt or heard about it, but very few teachers tell you what is a question tag and why is it important and when should we use it, where should we use it. So, before we start learning the rules of changing a sentence or adding a question tag to a given sentence, let me just quickly tell you what is a question tag and how effectively it must be used as a tool while we speak or while we write. Now, a question tag is nothing but a short question added after the given word or a given sentence. Once a sentence is written, if you are writing a paper in the exam, then you have to write a sentence, put a comma and then add a short question that is called as a question tag. So, suppose somebody asks you why are we learning question tag, the funny answer for a student may be that I am going to score marks, maybe one or two. But beyond that, is question tag playing any other role in our communication? Let me tell you my friends, question tag is the most important, a very effective tool when we are talking to someone, when we are giving a speech, when we are writing a persuasive appeal to someone, then question tag helps us to make the other person, it may be a listener, it may be audience, it may be a reader, if we want to make the other person agree with what we say, then question tag must be used effectively so that the attention of the reader, attention of the audience can be caught. So, to catch the attention effectively question tag is used. Now, what is question tag is simple that when a sentence is given, we add a short question using helping verbs. So, let us start with the rules. If you want to write a correct answer in exam hall or if we want to use question tag correctly in our communication or while speaking or drafting or writing a speech, then we must know in detail the rules. So, in fact, there are seven important rules that uh, are to be learned so that we can easily write correct answer or use easily the correct question tag. To begin with, the rules are seven listed in front of you. Let me explain you one after the other. The first thing that we must do whenever you write answer for question tag or we want to use question tag is we have to see or check if the given sentence that is in front of us is affirmative or negative. So, again a question arises which sentences are affirmative and which sentences are negative. Simply speaking sentences having no, not, never or neither nor they are normally negative. All other sentences which do not have these words are affirmative sentences. So, first thing is to check whatever sentence is in front of us, is it affirmative or negative? That is the first step, that is the first rule. The second rule has A and B two parts. If the given sentence, as soon as we have a sentence in, in front of us or if we are writing a sentence, we must ask ourselves if the sentence is affirmative. The rule says if the sentence given is affirmative or whatever sentence we are going to use is affirmative, then the question tag that we will add after the sentence must be negative. So, it is exactly the opposite of one another. All affirmative sentences always have negative question tag whereas, all negative sentences have affirmative question tag. So, so say she is a very lazy girl. So, the immediately the question tag will be negative is not she because the sentence is affirmative. That is rule number 2 A and B. Now, the third rule is after we check whether the sentence is affirmative or negative, the thing is clear in our mind if the sentence is affirmative whatever question tag short question that we are going to use that will be naturally negative. Now, how to make out a question tag? So, the first third rule is check if there is any helping verb in the given sentence. So, if you have seen my earlier video which was devoted only for helping verbs and parts of speech, I have told you that there are 24 helping verbs. 
Our job is just to check out whether there is any one in fact 20 let me quickly give you a recap how, which 20 verbs are there which play important role in so suppose we say five forms of the verb to be that is is am are was were then do does did 5 plus 3 8 then have has had 8 plus 3 11 and then we have a long list of modals that is can could will would shall should may might must now these are 11 plus 9, 20 helping verbs. The third rule says ki if there is any helping verb, so we have to check whether we find any one of the 20 words that I just told you. If there is any helping verb, then the same helping verb must be used for question tag. Now here is one problem over here. Normally when we use a question tag, we use helping verb plus not in affirmative sentences. Suppose the sentence is having the word have. So, we are going to use question tag haven't. So, do we feel that all helping verbs take not and are they pronounced in the same way? Like r plus not becomes aren't, have plus not becomes haven't. Then what shall we do when am plus not is used? Can we use amant? Have you, you, have you heard anybody using amant? The grammar book says that am plus not is in question tag should not be written as amant, but it should be written as aren't. There is one more helping verb which do not have the same form like will plus not is never written as willn't. Then do you know what do we write? Will plus not becomes won't. These are two exceptions. Other than these all helping verbs take not and they are written in the form n apostrophe t. So, are becomes aren't, have becomes haven't, should becomes shouldn't, can becomes can't, will becomes won't am plus not become aren't. So, if there is helping verb then we are going to use the same for question tag. So, for example, suppose we say a sentence is having have in the given sentence. There is have as a helping verb. Should the question tag be have not, haven't or only have? Everything depends on first and second rule. If you are clear ki sentence is affirmative, naturally the answer will be haven't. If the sentence is having negative word in it, then only have will be used. So, if you learn all rules step wise logically, no answer mistake will be there. Now, uh, do you feel my dear friends that every sentence in English that we use for question tag should have a helping verb? Can there be any sentence where there is no helping verb used and still we need to write answer or we need to use question tag in it? Yes, naturally there are millions of sentences where helping verb is not used. Then how should we form question tag for them? So based on that the fourth rule says if there is no helping verb then what should we do? The rule says check the tense. If you are very good in the tenses, at least we can guess whether it is present or past. That much knowledge we have. Ki if the given sentence is found to be in present tense and there is no helping verb used. Two conditions. Listen carefully my dear friend. Check the tense. If the sentence is in present tense and there is no helping verb used. In that case, we can take the help of the word do or does. Now again the question arises when to use do and when to use did. No my dear friend do and does for present tense and did should be for the past tense. So when to use do and when to use does. If you know we have learnt about personal pronouns used as subject and we also talked about third person subject. Now that is why basics are very important. Now the rule says ki if this sentence has third person subject that is any noun for which we use he she it as a pronoun. If the sentence is in present tense there is no helping verb and the subject is third person. In that case we use does otherwise we use do. I will be sending you some sentences for practice also. We will take examples also for these two topics so that we can explain in detail with examples. Now the second part of the fourth rule is ki if the sentence is not in present then it can be in the past tense. So if the sentence is in the past tense 
then helping verb did is used to form question tag. Now, there is no problem about third person subject, first person or singular over here because there is only one. For do and does, the rule is very clear. For third person subject, present tense without helping verb, then you have to use does otherwise do. Now, based on this, there are two more important rules. Most of the students do not keep these rules in mind so that their answers are mostly wrong. The fifth and the sixth rules are very important. The fifth rule says, ki if the given sentence is imperative. Now, the brows have gone up. You may be a little confused. What is imperative sentence? Let me clearly tell you. All imperative sentences are also called as orders, commands or requests. Even to make it even more easy, let me say all imperative sentences, my dear friends, always start with the verb. That is, they do not have any subject in the beginning, they start with the verb. So, when the action word is in the beginning, so suppose you open a question paper or you are appearing for exam competitive and there is a question with four options given, open the door immediately. If the sentence is starting with the verb, if the first verb in the sentence is verb that is action word, then be sure that it is imperative sentence. And as soon as you are clear ki it is imperative sentence, then question tag for all imperative sentences is fixed. Just like a match, fix, match fixing, question tag is fixed for it. All imperative sentences have only one question tag that is will you. Uh, sometimes you must be saying that some people use question tag for imperatives as won't you also. Uh, this is possible when imperative sentences is like an advice. You know there are two ways of giving, one is direct order, hmm? open the book, start work immediately, that looks like a direct order. But when you go to Dr. Mehta and after treatment he tells you take this medicine regularly, the, take this medicine regularly is not a direct order. A patient can say I can't do it, that is true. But if the sentence that is imperative is like an advice or a suggestion, then you can use won't you, but if you do not understand anything fine, will you is considered as a right answer. And the last but most important part is sixth rule that is when the sentence for sentences beginning with lets. Let me tell you clearly, if the sentence starts with let, it is imperative, it is not the sixth rule that we have to use. If the sentence start with lets, that is let plus us, so it is suggestion. So, if the sentence starts with lets, the question tag is fixed and it is only shall we. I hope all the rules for adding a question tag as a grammar unit for all exams is clear to you. I suggest Okay, whenever you will be watching this video, you will see the rules on your right hand, left hand side. Keep listening carefully and do practice. I will send you some sentences for practice and we will make one more video where answers and examples will be discussed for question tag. For any practice exercises or notes, please check the description box. Please like, share and subscribe my channel. Don't forget to press the bell icon. If you have any queries, let me know in the comment box.